giving it a certain sense of the avant garde after doing it in France. It's classier that way. It's a good trick for this guy's the low budget. Slide it. As a director, you're always trying to challenge yourself to, you know, go outside of your comfort zone and try new things and, you know, see what you can accomplish and see if you can do the things you think you can do. And I think for actors, it's the same. I think that people are always looking for an opportunity to not only challenge themselves, but to, like, push themselves to do something that's a little scary and that's very rewarding if, it's, if they pull it off. What do you think is on it? Well, by the looks of everything, I see one goddamn fucked up horror picture. Well, what would be the ultimate, like, sort of lowbrow exploitation thing of, like, sex and violence, and then how would you do something maybe a little more highbrow with it? And that's sort of where the idea came from. It just seemed very, um... Innovative, but I guess just a fresh take on horror. And as somebody who's done a lot of horror projects, uh, I really do like to throw people off and build suspense. And I think that Ty is excellent at that. And he talked about how, yeah, how he wanted this movie to be a love letter to film, but also sort of the parallels between the way early horror and this sort of slasher culture of horror and the culture of independent genre filmmaking and sort of parallels with the beginning of the pornography industry. You know, at the time in the 70s, like, porn was starting to become more of a viable way of making movies. Otherwise, you were less sort of locked out of the film business unless you had, like, movie stars or were from Hollywood or something like that. But what porn, in a way, did was sort of level the playing field for people to get into the movie business. Hollywood, here we come. No, ma'am, we don't need Hollywood. These type of pictures turn regular folks into stars. We're going to do it all ourselves. Ain't that right, RJ? Yes, sir. And that was particularly speeding up in the 70s and heading into the 80s with, like, VHS and things like that. So there's people who saw an angle, and they each had their own angle with it. And um, I don't know, I'm just very charmed by people who have, like, an entrepreneurial spirit. I've been a fan of Ty's work for a long time. I think he's a very special director. And then I read the, the script, and I thought it was, it was completely outrageous and, and brilliant. <laughs> I think I had been seeing a lot of modern horror movies and feeling they, they, they were soft. And that it seemed to me that there was a lack of the kind of horror movies that I sort of remember growing up on being a little bit like uh, taboo and a little bit like, oof, this is a little like edgy of a, of a movie that's like daring you to go see it. And it wasn't outrageous for outrageous sake. I think that sometimes with, you know, scripts you get a shock value sort of feeling of, of thinking that they're doing something to just kind of turn the page or make people talk, but I really felt like everything was intentional about the script. This is top of movie. I think for a lot of actors, playing against type is, you know, that's like a buzzword that I think you hear, oh, you played against type. But I think for a lot of people, it's, people don't believe you can do something because you've done something else before. And so I think, I think for a lot of the cast, like Brittany, who people have an assumption of the kind of roles that she will always play, to play something opposite that isn't just to like show people she can do it. Farmer's daughter, take one. It's because like she probably just wants to do it and the opportunity hasn't come along as often as she would like. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. I was hesitant, but I also really thought that there was such a great opportunity there to do something with this that was new and transgressive and just sort of different than something I've done before. In the same way that RJ is very much intent on creating a good, dirty movie, like we want to really make a really cinematic horror movie. <laughs> you just make a teeth work. Horror films are some of the most fun, if not the most fun. And I say this because when you're creating a horror film, it's the, the sole purpose is entertainment. You're going out there to excite people and build adrenaline and give people scares. She's a horror princess. So she's done multiple horror movies before, 
and that was the thing that I was I thought was really cool because this was my first horror movie and 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 I, I felt like oh this is like cool I'm doing a movie with Jenna Ortega like this is awesome and I'm doing a movie with Ty West like I'm entering the horror world in the right way this is awesome when I would meet people about this movie it's a tricky movie to cast because you know, the subject matter is what it is. So whenever I would sort of Zoom with somebody, because it was in the peak pandemic time, I would Zoom people and they had read the script. And the first question I always asked them was like, why the hell do you want to be in this movie? Because there's no shortage of reasons not to be in the movie. We shouldn't disturb him. It would only make him angry. You would lie, Daddy, when he's angry. I could give you a ride. And I think, Whoever had a sort of a really compelling answer to that, like I think started a really good conversation. And I think Brittany, when I met her, she just had a very specific reason why and I, she should probably tell it. And I remember thinking when I initially read the script that this movie was kind of a horror lens on time and beauty and the juxtaposition of these people who are taking it for granted because you do that when you're young, juxtaposed with older people who are running out of time and how scary that is for so many people. Why should you get to have it all? What have you ever done except be a whore? So when I read the script, I was like, oh, this is like perfect. This is exactly what I've been looking for, something new to do. And, and, and I'm a big horror fan. And it was just like a, a no brainer, you know? It was something different. It goes from being a very fun, loving, good time sort of movie. To live and laugh on our own terms and never accepting what self-righteous naysayers have to say. And very shortly, they start to realize that things aren't quite what it seems. I really loved working with Mia. I, I value her as not only a human being, but as an actress and, and how much commitment she gave to both of her roles. That was a really challenging feat to take on two vastly different sort of characters and doing them seamlessly day to day. And I think that's, you know, a big part of what makes Mia so amazing is that she's like fearless in her ability to sort of go all in. Like she's only has like 10 out of 10 speed. And so she, you know, she just kind of was completely vulnerable when she needed to be. She was like completely unafraid when she needed to be. She embodied this old character and like, it wasn't so method that you never spoke to Mia when she was in the makeup but you didn't really look to speak to Mia when she was in the makeup because she was so kind of convincing that she was Pearl. I found it very restrictive actually and, and, and at first I wasn't sure how I would cope with it, uh, but I soon realized that actually if I, I could harness that feeling of essentially feeling trapped and, and use that for Pearl because that's really one of the main obstacles that Pearl is, is dealing with is just the sense of entrapment, that there is no future for her. And so whenever I started to feel overwhelmed in the makeup, I, I, I tried to harness those feelings and, and breed a sense of authenticity into her. What are you doing? And everybody else was just blown away because Ty kept Pearl away from the, the other cast and so when it came for Pearl to interact with their characters they hadn't seen her before and so pretty much all of them really taken aback. I think that was what made her so excited it's like this is an opportunity I'm almost never gonna get again and I was like I remember her saying she's like I can kill it and like that was the energy that I wanted and I think she did and I think that you know everybody was like she's like a very she's a force of nature kind of person on set because you don't really know what you're gonna get like you have a rough idea and then you then it's very raw and you just get what you get and you get some really amazing stuff out of it. And I think that's because she she just commits like 100%. He was very adamant that he wanted these characters to be lovable and he really wanted to develop these characters, which was uh, important to me that we that by the time the the, the, the story takes a turn, that you, you don't want these characters to die. That you, you're really invested in them. The coolest thing about Ty is you know I mean? he's edited, he's written, he's directed. So it's like when you come together and you have, this is his baby. So I think having created the characters, having set the world, having decided certain shots and coming up with these shot lists of what he wants from this film, I think that when it came down to actually filming on set, there was really just one way. I remember even some of my castmates were talking about this where it's, oh, they would, 
think about preparing their lines a certain way the night before, but then they would just kind of throw it away because they knew that they were going to come on set and Ty was going to tell them, no, it should be exactly like this. When you come back in, if you can be like, you know, and you're like, ah, and because remember, he hits you, you come in, and there's like a gap where he says like, uh, you're just making it worse. And you were here like freaking out a little bit before you came back up there. So it's going to be a good time to feature this. So basically, when you scream, you can play it up a little bit, and then when you come back down to here, you can be like, oh shit, my hand. It's his take on it. You can tell that he's a, a really big fan of horror. And he studied it, and he kind of knows like how to make his own thing. I'd say, boom and what? Uh, let's boom and pan with him, and make it, make it new, and refreshing for people. And so I think it's great to get people who have played one thing a lot to get to play something else. I always think it's really interesting when you see a comedian turn in a really dramatic performance, and it's like not surprising to me. Or when you see a musician who suddenly is now a good actor out of nowhere, and it's like not surprising because these are people who are like very connected to their emotions and are very unafraid to put themselves out there. And so I think for people who have a typecasting idea in the world, most of it's bullshit. And if they have the opportunity to do something else, they'll deliver. Because you got that X factor.